So we're doing pretty good. We've now made this uh, version instead that's a big chunky container with a bunch of different little containers inside of it. So how could we go, how could we take that just another step, right? How could we go a little bit farther with that? What, what are some other directions we might think about exploring? Well, one of the ones that we might think about exploring is we might think about how, and let's add another container here, how we could switch this up a little bit, right? Because we could use a select method like we've used with our buttons to be able to pick this from a, or to be able to use a table to pick the thing that we want and then drive that particular one. Okay, what on earth do I mean by that? That seems like crazy talk. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a select and uh, we're gonna make a little bit of space here. We're gonna actually do this right here in, well, no, let's, let's do it inside of this container, why not? Yoink, we'll delete that. And it will look a little more tidy. So we'll move in here, we're gonna move to the home of our network. We're gonna make a select. And the other thing we're gonna work with here a little bit is we are gonna work with a table um, component this time. And we haven't done much with con table components, but we'll see how they can be really interesting here in one moment. I'm gonna reverse the order of these. Okay, so what I need to think about first is what the dimensions of this thing are. Uh, and I want this to be, let's see here, let's make it 500 tall. So the height of those containers over here already, and we're gonna make it 600 wide, which means that I want this guy to be 500 and 500. Excellent. And I'm gonna feed this with a select in one moment. And you guess that what I want to use to populate that select is going to be here from our master list of data. Let's grab this and pull it over. Oops. It's going to be relative. I want to go ahead and extract, extract rows by index. I want to start at one and I want to go to the, uh, the last row in this, right? So in this case, I can change this a little bit to be me.input table rows minus one, excellent, that gives me one through eight. Columns, I wanna also extract columns by index, and I only want that first column because I only want these names to come out of here. I'm gonna kinda connect that, and bada bing, bada boom, I've got this um, table, right? If I make it viewer active, I can see that these are buttons that I can click. Well, how can I take better advantage of that? Let's go ahead and close this reference here for one second. Well, first of all, I wanna change the dimensions of this. I happen to know, right, that I want this one to be 100 wide. I want it to be 100 wide because this one is 600 wide. I want this to be 100, this to be 500. All of it to equal 600, you get the idea. So it's gonna be 100 in width, it's gonna be 500 tall, and what I don't want is I don't want duck 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 these bouncy, bouncy uh, tables. Instead, I'm gonna go to the table page and the number of rows is just gonna be the input number of rows. And the columns can stay just as it is. Excellent, so now I've got uh, something that's looking more like what I actually wanna have. In this select, let's go ahead and split our view here. We're gonna back up for one second. We'll dive into this thing that's already replicated and we can see that if we grab one of these and drop it on the select, set it as a relative reference, right? Just like we've done with other selects, we can grab a panel from anywhere, which also happens to mean that lo and behold, we also get all of these values inside it as well. So we're cooking. We're doing some of the things that we really wanna do. If we move up here one layer, we can see they're stacked together. We're gonna to hit the P key to turn on the parameters and we can align them left to right. That stacks uh, this guy over here on the right-hand side. If we do right to left, then we end up with this instead. Okay, so this is close to what I want. Now, what I really wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to click on these different buff buttons and have them populate with the respective selected container. Okay, how might I go about doing that? Well, I could go about doing that, again, by thinking about how we do some of our scripting, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and dive here inside of my table. I'm gonna add a panel execute dat, our good old uh, handy dandy panel execute dat. I'm gonna do this um, when my select value changes, right? So the panel value select, when it goes from the on to the off position, I'm gonna have it run a particular function. 
what's the function that I want to have it run? Well, just like we did before, when we pl uh, planned this idea, we had a target. And in this case, the target is going to be the operator that is uh, one network above me called select one. I need to give this guy quotation marks. Right, I also need a path start. I need to know what the beginning of that path looks like. And in fact, if we split this, we could uh, back up here. And we might even look at that parameter, right? Let's go to panel, excuse me, go to select. And we can see that the path start is a string that starts out dot dot slash container one slash item and then a digit is added to the end of that. Excellent. Well, we happen to know that oh, we just want to add a number to the end of that. And in this case, the number that I want to add is me dot parent parent panel. I want to grab the panel value called cell over ID and I want to add one to that. In this case, I need to make this into a string. We learned this before. So str, make this a string please. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say target, and I want to make sure this is spelled correctly up here. Target dot, uh, excellent. Target dot par dot select panel, pan all is going to be equal to path start, path start plus num. I should also make sure this is spelled correctly path start. Great, which should mean here that when we uh, bounce out up here, if we take a look at this panel, we should, excellent, be able to select different one of these, different ones of these based on which one of these that we click on. Okay, we can also drive them in real time. Okay, that's, that's getting pretty sassy. That's pretty, uh, it's pretty good. That's, mm, I like that. I like that a lot so far. Okay, so what else might we want to do, right? So that's one particular method. That's a kind of select method. And selecting is really, that's hip. That's a cool way to go about thinking about how we might do this in a really useful and uh, kind of utilitarian way. What if, right, what if I want to load these things as presets instead? What if that's my idea, is that I've got a bank of presets and I want to populate um, this guy with presets and then have it run live in some way? Okay, well, what might that mean? Let's go ahead and add another container. We're going to drop in one more container here. Uh, let's make this one, again, 500 by 500. And this time around, we're going to borrow this technique that we've already used. We'll go ahead and copy that. We'll come over here. We'll paste that. We already like the way that works. That's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the select down here. And I'm going to use the select um, to do something different for me, right? Um, because what I want to do now with the select I want to make sure this is true. Yeah, this is true. This is what I'm going to do this time. Is I'm going to use this select to actually pull out uh, the row that I want. So let's let's back her down just one second and see what that means. So let's reset all the parameters here. I know that I want uh, dot dot slash data slash final is the data that I want to grab a hold of. Right. The parameter information I want to grab is going to be just one of these lines, right? And I know that I can do that. Well, f yeah, let's, we'll change it here in one second, but we'll see what that looks like a little bit, right? I want to just bounce index and let's turn that into a defined number, right? I want to go to like one and one, or I want to go to two and two, right? I want to change that. Well, we know that we already can do something like that. Right, we've learned how to do that um, with the scripting method. So let's let's take a closer look at how we might do that. Let's take a closer look here inside of our table comp, and let's change up the scripts we've written here. I'll just a little bit. This time, what we're going to do is we're instead going to go ahead and point to our target. Our target, instead of being 
uh, up one called select one is going to be dot dot slash up one called select three. We're going to get rid of these guys. Or actually, let's hold on to that number because we do want to hold on to a number. We don't need it to be a string anymore, though. Because instead, what we'll do is we'll use that number to define the index row, start row, and end row. Right? And I can see here its name, the parameter name. So I'm going to say target.par.rowIndexStart is going to be equal to num. And target.par.rowIndexEnd is going to be equal to num, this number. And what we should end up with then is 1 gives us 1, 8 gives us 8. There we can drive this whole thing just by clicking on this. Excellent. OK. Let's grab something that we've, uh, another thing we've already done. We'll split our view here. Let's back out. We've got this master component. We'll copy and paste him here into our container. We don't need this guy anymore. Close. All right. Excellent. Uh, let's take a closer look inside. Now, this guy doesn't happen to have our, our locked version anymore, right? This one's just running all the time, which is what I want. I want that. It's going to be great. I do, I do think, hmm, well, let's, let's see what we can do here, right? Uh, first things first, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to select this guy. We need to grab him and get him down inside of here. We've got to modify this a little bit. So let's pull that information in. Perfect. Let's close this. We'll scoot this on over. We'll insert our operator, and we're going to insert a merge. Let's go ahead and plunk those together. We'll stack them in the order that we want. Perfect. This means that we've got to come in here, right? Because we changed a bunch of things. So this needs to be 2 and 3. This guy should be 1 instead. And this should be 4. All right, so far so good. And now what we need to do is we need to think about how we could use this number, right? We want to use this number to drive the panel value. And I bet what we could do is we could use a dat execute for this, right? So we could use a dat execute to run a, um, run a script when there's a change. Um, so let's think about this as, um, well, let's, let's select again. Because we're going to, out of this, we're going to pull just this top one. The rows that we want are going to be by index. We want just the things in the zero row, right? That's the only row I want. We're going to use this dat to run the dat execute. And we'll do a table change, right? Whenever this table changes, and let's define what we want to have happen. So when this table changes, I am going to want to change the parameter of my panel's u-value. Right? So again, what we're going to do is we're going to say that uh, val is equal to the operator, right? This guy that's next to me. Val is equal to select select two, and out of select two, I want it to be row uh, row zero, column zero, and then what I would like it to do is I want it to look at me dot parent me parent parent panel, and the u value. The u is going to be equal to val whenever this thing changes, which should mean. Let's see if this works. I'm not totally sure that we've got this right yet, but we'll find out. Because this should mean that we can, right, this is all live. This is working just like we want it to. Yung, 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 yung. Great. And if we change one of these guys, oh, our presets work like a charm. That's pretty sassy. 
not bad by us, right? Because we might think about how we could do something crazy, crazy kids, uh, right? Like let's take and we'll make some noise. Um, and let's think about our rota- Ooh, do, 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 do. what do we want? Maybe our Taurus noise? Let's run our Taurus noise into some noise. Our Taurus noise goes into some noise, and we'll animate this, um, right? We'll go, uh, abs time dot frame, right? What I don't want to do is I've changed the name of it, right? Remember its name is should be T-Noise. So let's come in here and let's call it T-Noise. We can do this lovely trick. We can insert a null. I like this trick a lot. We'll plug it right into T-Noise. We'll delete that. What we should have now, oh, our noise is too small. Figures, right? So let's do some math instead. We'll take our torus noise. Let's disconnect these. And the operation that we're going to want to do is uh, let's combine our operators with multiplication. All right. What does that give us? Oh, yeah, it's way, way too jittery, jittery. Let's um, pop this guy out a little bit here. And we'll take a closer look. And maybe what we want in this noise is we could turn down the amplitude on it a little bit. Right? So now we've taken a way to actually animate something that's live. Maybe this isn't the method we want. Maybe instead what we want is we just want to uh, think about running our x, and our x and y rotation. Maybe that goes into account instead. Uh, and ch -ch -ch channels to count. And not to count, excuse me. Maybe we want to use that as a speed. Now again, those values have been, are normalized in a different way now, right? Because we rescaled them. But it does mean, all right, let's delete that. Uh, and let's do insert speed. So now our, our sliders and our buttons work very differently. This is a very different way of us thinking about how this is actually going to behave, right? 500 by 600. And we're going to align these right left. There we go. Let's view that again. Right, because now not only do we have these sliders that actually drive the, the live element that's happening inside of them, but we also have presets as a place where we actually start. So we like jump to a preset, but then once we're at the preset, we still have our ability to s manipulate some of those parameters instead. Right. Now we're really getting, we're starting to make some kind of uh, funky choices that we might be able to, to really exploit in some interesting ways. All right. And I should also point out, right, let's go ahead and um, let me minimize this other version that's running. And let's turn all of these guys off. And we can see that any one of these, oops, Right? Any one of these given ways of dealing with this particular problem, we're still performing at 60 frames a second. And that's happening with the, of being in the networking environment and not, have done, not having have done some of the kind of optimization work that we might uh, have thought about doing. I should also point out, right, uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, maybe this one. Let's view this guy that this is still all pulling. All of that information is um, being propagated here from this original table. So if we were to change our names here like uh, to Billy, uh, Jen, Dan, Sarah, Molly, uh, I don't know, uh, um, 
Uh, Billy's already gone. Uh, what about, uh, I don't know, Ian? Or uh, Daniel? Right, so we're able to actually chain, make changes over here in this table, which will then push, of course, all the way over here, which also means that if we update this table with different information, right? 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. If we go to Billy's preset, oops, we should see these change. 0.75. And they're not. Oh, why are they not? Let's find out. Uh, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Let's look at what's happening. Oh, that's right, of course, that's selecting from over here. Oh, of course, that's, that's not working in this particular case because those parameters are loaded when we recreate those operators, and this is selecting from that one. We should see that, however, change this one. Yeah, right? Yes. Right, if we wanted it to see it change Billy in both of these, in order to make that work, we would actually have to go here to our replicator and recreate from our replicator. And recreating from our replicator is then going to uh, regenerate our networks. All right, so that is, uh, that is so much. There's so many different concepts all crammed and slammed together, and hopefully um, we'll get through a little bit of that in class and we'll be able to think about how we can take advantage of that when we start to build our own systems that are data reliant. All right, happy programming this week, kids. It's going to get deep, fast, fierce, and even more exciting.